Hi, yes, this is the third and last episode concerning the Polar Path Sampas Coupler from Bendix. I have done the complete electromechanical reverse engineering of that thing. You can see on that image the electromechanical block diagram of the mechanical computing unit. It is something similar to the MK9 Compass computer. The main part of that system is this control transformer, this one here. So you can see that there are five brush contacts. Actually, the stator of this control transformer can rotate. And this control transformer is represented here. It is connected to the directional gyro, which is on the top of that page. So actually, when the voltage of the rotor is zero, the angle of the rotor is the sum of the equivalent angle of the gyro plus the angle of the stator here. This is equivalent to the differential gear, which was present on the MK9. We can see here the block diagram of the MK9. So we can see the differential here. So the output shaft here is the sum of the gyro plus a correction. So it is the same here. The output shaft here is the sum actually of the gyro plus the correction which is performed by the rotation of the stator of this synchro transmitter CT2. We need the servo control at the output here in order to set the proper angle of the shaft in order to have zero on the rotor voltage here. In the preview system this was not required because the output of the differential gear is of course mechanical but in the MK9 the servo control was required in order to convert the voltage of the gyro into a shaft. It was this servo control here. So how this thing works? You can see that the main loop is this one here. So the flux detector is connected to this slaving control transformer CT1. You can see that when the output is slaved to the flux detector, there is a new voltage on the rotor of this control transformer. Otherwise, when there is a difference between the output shaft here and the flux detector, there will be an error voltage at 800 Hz. This error voltage is converted into a 400 Hz voltage. This error voltage is amplified using the servo control amplifier number one here. The rotation of the shaft of this motor is fed to a gearbox. So you can see this gearbox here. The speed is selected using this clutch. And this permits to select between the slow normal mode, which is on the right here, using this train gear, or the fast mode, using a direct 1-1 transmission here. The output of the gearbox in red is fed to another train gear, and this permits the rotation of the stator of the control transformer here, so this permits the correction, and this is done until the error voltage is zero here. At that moment, the output is left to the flex detector. There are two additional features which were not present on the MK9 Compass computer. The first additional feature is the clutch synchro transmitter here. So this is normally used for the autopilot. And this is this synchro transmitter here. You can see the clutch here. Okay, you can see maybe on the screen it can be difficult. Maybe you can see uh, the little springs on the back of this synchro transmitter. When the clutch is not activated, there is a special mechanical stuff on the back of that synchro which permits to center the rotor to the stator in order to have zero volt at the output. So in that case, when connection is not used, so this gives actually a scalar measurement when the clutch is engaged. In that case, there will be a voltage which depends on the variation of the shaft around the previous position of the shaft. On that system, there is also a compensation cam here. So this permits to add a small angle which depends on the angle of the shaft. So this permits the correction of linearity every 15 degrees. Also on that system, there is an adjustment of the damping of the servo control here. And this is the goal of this potentiometer, this one. Okay, so in conclusion, this synchro transmitter with clutch is this one. We have the three other synchro transmitters, this one, this one, and the third one here. They are linked together. This motor here is this one. 
quasi output shaft. This is the correction motor, this one here, vertical. This is the first gear, this is this one. On the right here, there is a train gear for the normal mode. This is these gears here. And this train gear is here. The magnetic clutch is here, which permits the selection between the normal mode and the fast mode. Okay, and the last item, the most important, is this uh, control transformer. So now let's perform some tests on that device. Okay, so we can see that effectively a translation of this lever here permits uh, to have a rotation of that disc. So this permits to add a small angle. So the correction is performed every 15 degrees. So this is linear between two calibration points. So you can see that the maximum variation may be something like that. So it is something like 10 degrees. This is the test setup for this Bendix PolarPath Compass computer. The flux detector is here. The synchro transmitter simulates the directional gyro. The switch permits to select between the normal mode and the fast mode. The fast mode is activated for the moment. Okay, you can see the activation of the clutch. This HSI is connected to one synchro output, this one. So for the moment, the fast mode is activated. We will check that the output is always slaved to the flex detector. Okay, we change the heading of the gyro. You can see that there is a small overshoot. You can see in fast mode the left the gear is selected here. Okay, so now I will change the orientation of the flight detector. You can see that the output is left to the flux detector.
Okay, so now let's see the normal mode. I will disconnect the clutch. You can see that the correction is very slow. Okay, I will activate the fast mode. Now the normal mode. Okay, and I will change a little bit the heading. Ok, 30 degrees. Ok, so this is approximately 7 minutes for 10 degrees. That is to say 40 seconds per degree. Ok, I'm going to select the fast mode. Ok. We should have the same heading normally. Ok, I will set the normal mode in order to have a constant display. Ok, it is perfectly identical. That's all for this compass coupler. Thank you for watching and see you next time. Bye bye.